We're glad that you've chosen to listen to Allergy and Asthma Network's Patient Learning Pathway Programs. Today we're presenting Anaphylaxis and Allergies 101, a guide to learning more about allergies. You may be wondering, what is anaphylaxis? It is a severe, life-threatening allergic reaction to insect venom, medication, latex, or another allergen. Research shows that it occurs in about 1 to 50 people, although many believe the rate is higher. Symptoms typically involve more than one organ system and can include itching, redness, swelling, and hives on the skin, itching and swelling of the lips and tongue, vomiting, diarrhea, and cramps, shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing, chest pain or tightness, weak pulse, dizziness or faintness, a headache, nasal congestion, watery eyes, sweating, confusion, or a feeling of impending doom and possibly loss of consciousness. As you can see here, the average time to respiratory or cardiac arrest due to anaphylaxis is 30 minutes for a food allergy, 15 minutes for an insect venom allergy, and only five minutes when the allergic reaction is due to a medication. The symptoms of anaphylaxis can start within seconds of exposure, or they may not appear until two hours later. This makes identifying the cause of anaphylaxis a little tricky sometimes. Symptoms can be different each time a person experiences anaphylaxis, and they can vary in severity each time. But when symptoms start, they usually progress quickly. While skin symptoms such as itchy rashes and hives are common with anaphylaxis, they don't always occur. 10 to 20 percent of cases have no skin symptoms. An important rule to remember is that epinephrine is the only medication that can reverse the life-threatening symptoms of anaphylaxis. It is the first line of treatment and should be administered as soon as anaphylaxis symptoms occur. 30 percent of people who experience an anaphylactic reaction need more than one dose of epinephrine to relieve symptoms. People at risk for anaphylaxis should always carry two epinephrine auto-injectors with them. Epinephrine should be used at the first sign of symptoms and always followed up with medical care right away. Approximately 15 million Americans have a food allergy, including 6 million children. Eight foods account for 90% of all food allergy re reactions in the United States. Cow's milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, soy, fish, and shellfish. Other food allergies range from avocados to yams to sesame. Some people are even allergic to meat, but that's very uncommon. The only proven way to prevent an allergic reaction is to avoid the foods you're allergic to. And the best way to find out what you're allergic to is to get a diagnosis from a board certified allergist. Some children will outgrow their food allergies over time, especially if they're allergic to milk, egg, or wheat. It is less common to outgrow an allergy to peanuts or tree nuts, but it is still possible. Some practical tips for people with a food allergy, including reading labels for all foods. The Food Allergen Labeling and Consumer Protection Act mandates that labels of food packages that contain one of the top eight food allergens list the allergens in clear language, either in the ingredients or in a clearly marked statement that says that the product contains the allergen. Look for the statement that says, may contain. Some eight ingredients can be listed under many different names on a food label, such as whey for dairy or legumes for peanuts. If you're unsure about whether a food contains any ingredient that you're allergic to, don't buy the product and check with the manufacturer first to see what it contains. At home, you can have separate areas and tools to prepare food when someone in your family has an allergy. Some families choose to color code cutting boards and utensils. It's a good idea to prepare for food for the person with an allergy before preparing the rest of the meal. When an unsafe food allergen comes in contact with a food that's safe, that's called cross-contact. It's very easy for this to happen. It's as simple as dipping a knife in the jelly jar after using it to spread peanut butter, or chopping almonds on a cutting board and then slicing a tomato without cleaning the cutting board first. To avoid cross-contact, always wash hands before preparing food, as well as cutting boards, dishes, pots, pans, and countertops.
Keep allergen-safe foods separate in both the cupboard and refrigerator. And remember to never share food. When eating out, call the restaurant ahead of time or check online menus to be sure they can accommodate your allergy. Communicate with the restaurant staff about your food allergies and create a card that lists your allergies that can be given to the chef or kitchen staff. Read menus carefully and don't order foods that may cause an allergic reaction. Always carry two epinephrine auto-injectors with you in case you need to treat anaphylaxis. And be sure you check ingredients every time you eat out, even at the same restaurant, as the ingredients in foods can change regularly. A board-certified allergist can help you to determine if you have a food allergy or food intolerance. This is very important because there's a difference between the two. In the case of milk, it's important to know if you have a lactose intolerance or a true milk allergy. If you have an intolerance, the reaction takes place in your digestive system with mild to moderate discomfort. Symptoms are all gastrointestinal and don't necessarily happen right away. If you have an allergy, the reaction takes place in your immune system and can be life-threatening. Multiple body systems are affected, including skin, respiratory, heart, and gastrointestinal. The reaction is usually immediate within 30 to 60 minutes. With anaphylaxis, 911 should be called. For most people, bee or other insect stings simply hurt or itch or cause a lump where the sting happened. This is called a local reaction. It responds well to ice and the itch re is relieved by an oral antihistamine. When the venom causes a reaction other than where the sting happened, it is called a systemic reaction or anaphylaxis. This is a medical emergency that requires immediate treatment with epinephrine. What should you do if you've been stung? Flick the insect away from your skin and walk, don't run, away from the area. Quick movements will threaten some insects and running may increase your body's absorption of the venom. If a stinger is left in the skin, scrape it off with a flat surface like a credit card. Don't use tweezers or your fingertips. Apply ice to reduce swelling and watch for signs of an anaphylactic reaction. If you suspect anaphylaxis, seek treatment immediately. Administer epinephrine and get to a hospital emergency room. Latex allergy is a reaction to proteins from rubber tree sap. The milky fluid is used to manufacture more than 40,000 products, including surgical gloves and balloons. Symptoms range from skin irritation to respiratory symptoms to life-threatening anaphylaxis, and there's no way to predict what will happen if exposed. The only way for people with latex allergy to prevent symptoms is strict avoidance of latex, which is not an easy thing. Common items that contain latex include latex balloons, rubber gloves, rubber bands, stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, mouse pads, and goggles. Many people don't realize that latex can cross-react with foods that have similar proteins, especially banana, avocado, chestnut, and kiwi. Other cross-reactive foods include apple, carrot, celery, melons, potato, and tomato. Eating these cross-reactive foods may cause an allergic reaction for someone with a latex allergy. Some people are allergic to certain medications. This is called drug-induced anaphylaxis. Symptoms can begin within moments of ingesting the medication or up to several hours later. The most common medications that can cause anaphylaxis include antibiotics, aspirin, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, drugs used in anesthesia, and in rare cases, insulin. Exercise-induced allergy is rare, but it can be life-threatening. While experts aren't quite sure what causes exercise-induced anaphylaxis, some see an association between eating food or taking medications and exercise, even with a few hours between the two. With anaphylaxis, the cause is often obvious, but in rare cases, there is no obvious or apparent cause for the reaction. If this occurs, you should consult a board-certified allergist for an in-depth evaluation. Our key takeaway messages for today are, allergies can be mild, but they can be life-threatening. If a life-threatening allergic reaction, or what is called anaphylaxis, occurs, do not delay treatment. The only medication that treats anaphylaxis is epinephrine, and you should always carry two epinephrine auto-injectors if you are at risk for anaphylaxis. 
Resources can be found on Allergy and Asthma Network's website that can help you understand allergies and anaphylaxis. Look for our Understanding Anaphylaxis Guide that will provide you with a basic understanding of allergies and helpful tips. We have an Allergy Safe Dining Guide that will help you navigate dining out. For schools and families with school-aged children, check out our Allergy and Anaphylaxis, a practical guide for schools and families. We also have an Anaphylaxis at a Glance poster with the symptoms of anaphylaxis displayed in pictures. Links to these resources can be found on the Anaphylaxis resource list on Allergy and Asthma Network's website in the Patient Learning Pathways section on our site. Thank you for joining us today for Anaphylaxis and Allergies 101. Allergy and Asthma Network is working every day to end the needless death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions through outreach, education, advocacy, and research. Please join us for another Patient Learning Pathway presentation as we partner with you to breathe better together.